YouTube. Uh, this is a follow-up video to my live stream failure yesterday. Um, I had some additional questions that were posted, so I just wanted to cover them real quick and you know answer the Q&A. So the first question I had is, is there any tools that you wish you had or are planning to get in the future? Uh, for the most part, I feel like I'm pretty well stocked. The tools that I probably want more of in the future is probably some more updated sanders and a cordless router. Uh, that's something I'm looking into is cordless technology, uh, specifically in the sander and router technology, the sander and router category. Uh, the benefits are is that you know I don't have to plug in everywhere, and you know it's quick and easy to do. Uh, the only reason why I'm considering it is I have a cordless chainsaw, and what's nice about that is I'm not really limited to having a cord be dragged all around, and I can always swap out the batteries while one is charging. So it's, it's useful. Um, the other one is I probably would like to upgrade my planer to something bigger because again, I find it kind of limiting to only being able to plane 10 inches uh, for most of the table work that I do. Uh, personally, I'd like somewhere in the 12 to 16 range, but again, that's gonna come with time. When it comes to building larger pieces, how do you work with the space around me? Uh, so the nice thing is, again, since everything's on casters in this space, I'm not really limited to space because I can move the machines around to fit the work pieces I'm cutting. Uh, the biggest bonus is I can actually move the entire shop outdoors where there are no limitations, there's no walls, there's nothing in the way. Um, but again, if it's raining or the weather's not good or it's absolutely freezing, I still, in this space, I can move my tools around to fit the work pieces I'm trying to cut. What tools in your shop do you use the most? Uh, it really depends on the project. Um, I would say Atlas, a table saw, is still the most used tool in the shop we use for you know cutting boards and squaring. Uh, the other ones would probably be some of the hand tools, specifically my block planes for truing up boards. And then number two and three would be the Delta bandsaw. Uh, normally cut that, use that for cutting uh, wood to fit my fireplace and the lathe because a lot of things I sell at Barrel Clock Custom Carpentry are normally lathe based so like wine stoppers, cheese knives, uh, bar taps and all that stuff. Next question. Uh, if you want to build a home shop, what is an affordable way to do so? Um, so I'd probably break it down to a few categories. Uh, the best way is to start looking for used tools. Um, your pawn shops, your let go, Craigslist, um, any, any of those sites are good. You just, again, you have to inspect the machines, you have to make sure they work, and they have to make sure they're in good order. If those requirements are met, you're going to get tools in the lower ranges that are affordable for you. The other way is you got to bring up tools in every bit of conversation. So bring it up with your family, bring it up with your friends. Because once word gets around that you're looking for tools, sometimes there will be either a, a shop guy who's retiring or a, a widow who's trying to look for a way to get rid of some tools. And again, sometimes they just, they just want to get rid of it. So you could end up with machines for free or at a substantially lower price. Um, again, that's a good way. Um, again, that's how I acquired most of my tools was through... Uh, dumpster finds or someone was just trying to get rid of it or throw it away so again that's always an option the final one is for your birthday or Christmas or if someone's looking for a present to you ask for gift cards to home goods stores like Lowe's Home Depot Ace Amazon and use that money to buy the smaller tools or the jigs or the sanders to build up your shop because again, the nice thing is, is that it's gonna be something that you're gonna use and they'll make the people feel happy that they, you spent their money well. What is the biggest piece of equipment in my shop and how did I get it in? Well, that goes to Atlas. Atlas is the largest piece of equipment I have here. Um, its gross weight is somewhere in the 350 to 390 pounds. Um, if it was not on casters, it would be impossible to move around the shop. Um, I built the cart specifically so that it could be mobile. I could wheel it outside. I could wheel it onto a trailer and move it to a, another job site. So again, the nice thing is that 
since Atlas is on the wheels, there aren't any limitations to where I can take it or where I can be in my shop. If I didn't put it on wheels, I would be kind of stuck in having it stay in one specific spot in the shop and that's not a good thing. So again, for small shops, casters or the wheels that are on the bottom of carts are the best ways to make your shop work for you. Again, the nice thing is that every piece of equipment here is on wheels and again, I can move it to suit the needs of my projects, the needs of my space and it, when I'm done, I can store them all on one side of the shop and not take up an entire garage, shed, or basement that I'm using it. And most of you guys will probably be using a space like a garage, a basement, or a shed, and you're gonna have to share that space with someone else or some other thing. So again, casters give you that ability to move your parts around without limiting you to one specific setup. Again, there will be some things that are fixed, like your workbench, your tool racks, but for equipment, casters will be the greatest space saver you can use. Uh, with that said, that's all the questions I had on my live stream, so have a great day.